Hi everyone, welcome to today's lecture on population ecology. We'll have three short lectures and you'll have some quizzes to do in between. And then we will work on some projects in class related to the, today's lecture. So when we think about populations of organisms, we think about populations growing, getting bigger, and sometimes getting so big that the population crashes. In this case, this is a lemming and there's a joke about how lemmings will migrate to the sea and jump off cliffs when their population gets so big. And this is something that's observed when a population may, for example, exceed its carrying capacity in the environment. Now today our learning objectives are going to be to understand what factors contribute to population growth and decline, such as births and deaths, to understand how mathematics can help us understand population growth, and then we're going to learn to distinguish the exponential growth and logistic growth models and curves and do some uh, mathematical calculations of those. So some of the key terms, population is uh, obviously the, the main topic today. But when we study populations, we call this demographics. And that's when we're looking at things like birth rates and death rates in a population. I'm going to talk initially about survivorship curves. Then we'll get into some population growth equations where we use what's called the intrinsic rate of increase. And we're going to look at exponential growth and logistic growth. So let's take a second to think about a couple species ecologically. Think about how many eggs or offspring the organism would have, whether those are likely to survive or whether most of them die when they're early in life, and then what their survivorship is, is, is as they go through life. So we're going to start off with rainbow trout. So rainbow trout are a fish species, and each one lays somewhere between 500 and 1,000 eggs in a given year, and uh, can come back and spawn multiple times. So if we think about this species, it's producing a lot of eggs, many of which hatch, but very few of them will actually survive to become adult trout. If all thousand of those survive to become adult trout. You can quickly imagine the population becoming incredibly overcrowded very rapidly. So many of them do not survive to adulthood. We can contrast that with elephants. And elephants, for example, will have one offspring every few years and uh, tend to live a long life but have few offspring. So, if we look at this, we can create a survivorship curve. And a survivorship curve plots the number surviving versus the age of the organisms. And it allows us to describe what the mortality or the death rate of a population is like during time. So if we look at elephants, and we think about this, young elephants are pretty well taken care of by their mothers and have a strong likelihood of surviving. So their initial population, their initial survivor is going to be pretty high. So say a thousand young elephants were born, most of those thousand will reach adulthood and then tend to die of old age. So we see that modeled by this type of survivorship curve where most of the individuals are surviving early in life and dying later of old age. And this is what we call a type one survivorship curve don't worry about memorizing type 1, 2, and 3. I will give you those uh, so that you can see what's a type 1, 2, and 3, and then maybe ask you about what type of animal uh, would have each type when we go through this on exams. Now our rainbow trout, in contrast, the female rainbow trout lays a thousand eggs in a given year, and it's likely that most of those will not survive most of those will not reach a, a reproductive age. In fact, they mostly die in their first year, and only a small fraction will survive to adulthood. So that's a contrast here, and this is a type 3 curve. So where's a type 2 curve, you may be asking? So let's take a look at that. A type 2 curve is essentially a straight line, although this is a log linear scale. Um, but this is what we observe in birds, for example, where they have fairly constant survivorship throughout their lives, a constant proportion surviving at each stage of the life cycle. 
We see this in birds, uh, and we see it in lizards uh, and some other uh, reptiles. So this is a type two survivorship curve. So we can look at those three together, type one, two, and three, and have an idea when we think about an organism, what uh, type of survivorship curve it might have. And that uh, relates then to how it's going, its population will behave um, in the environment. So this figure shows kind of uh, a summary of all of that, where if we look at the type one, we see high survivorship early in life, followed by low survivorship later in life. Contrast that with a type three, which is low survivorship early in life, high survivorship once they reach adulthood. And then type two is a steady survivorship curve throughout life. So if we think about a species, let's think about a roundworm, for example. A roundworm is a parasitic worm or the, the type that uh, parasitizes humans and it will uh, lay many thousand eggs in a given time, all right? It lays thousands upon thousands of eggs. And the likelihood of any of those eggs ever reaching adulthood as a parasite is very, very small. So if we think about that, that's similar to what we learned with the rainbow trout, right? The rainbow trout was the type 3 survivorship curve. So, an example, the nematode would have a type 3 survivorship curve with almost all of the eggs not surviving uh, past the egg stage and very few of them ever reaching adulthood. All right? And again, here's a summary of that. Uh, elephants, humans, uh, several turtle species have type 1 curves as well as big things like whales. Uh, birds, lizards, and snakes for type 2. Fish, insects, crustaceans, worms, a lot of invertebrate organisms have a type 3 survivorship curve. So now we're going to have a quick quiz on the types of survivorship curves, and then we'll return to lecture and talk about population growth.